love bugs. It's Nikki from Call Me Ruby, and I pray you're having an amazing day, afternoon, evening, whenever this message finds you. I pray that it reaches those who are supposed to reach and that it encourages, uplifts, and confirms that which the Lord has been saying to you presently. As always, I want to welcome my new subscribers. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining the fam. I am excited about where the Lord is taking us to those who've been with me from the very beginning. Oh my goodness, look how far the Lord has brought us. I am so thankful for all the love, the encouragement, the support. Just the way you guys are just so awesome. I cannot ask for a more beautiful family. Thank you all. So listen, let's just jump into this beautiful word that the Lord so graciously dropped in my spirit maybe three days ago. I was literally just sitting at a family member's home and I was just thinking about all that I had to do. I was thinking about how I felt just a tad bit exhausted. I had been doing so much and I was like, Lord, I'm exhausted. How am I going to get these videos out? How am I going to be able to do everything that I feel that I need to do? It was in that moment that I heard the Lord say, embrace and receive my rest. Allow my peace to envelop you. Allow my peace to comfort you. All things are working together for your good. That alone brought so much peace. It just brought a calmness and a stillness upon me. And I'm thinking that is all the Lord had to say in that moment because that was enough. Listen, it was enough. But no, 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 no. God says, you ready for more? I got more daughter. And in that moment, he said, your husband will be a well for you to draw from. He will be your replenishing place. And that statement had me all in the fields, all in the spirit. It just felt so endearing, so sweet, so kind. And I immediately felt his presence. And I was just like, oh my goodness, how beautiful is that thought? How beautiful is that thought? And what I really thought was pretty awesome was the fact that I was not thinking about my man at that time. I'm thinking about him a lot, but at that moment, I was just like, I'm tired. I'm tired, Lord. And he simply said, your husband will be a replenishing place for you, a place to draw from. It was as if that was all. And just now, you all, I saw like a little heart in the spirit. Y'all, the Lord is intentional about allowing us to know what he's doing. He's intentional about making sure that we get the message and he is wanting to bring this simple love into our lives. What is so like God is that as I was telling you all that I was not thinking about the man at that time when God dropped that message in. That is when I saw the heart being carved out or the heart being drawn in my spirit. And it was like God was saying, but I was. I was thinking about it. And I want you to know exactly what I am doing in this hour. God wants you to know that he is sending this man into your life to be your replenishing place, your place to draw from. Grab that in the spirit. I literally just saw a heart being drawn in my spirit. How much more intentional can he get? Ladies, some of us feel overwhelmed, whether it be just from doing things on our own, whether it just be from desiring companionship, someone to share life with, whether it be you being a single mother, having to work a nine to five, whatever your situation is. Sometimes trying to juggle everything, we can become a bit overwhelmed. And God is saying, just as he is that replenishing in the spiritual, as he is the one that you draw from in the spiritual, he is bringing you natural help. He is bringing you that in the natural form and that is in the form of your spouse he is going to be that for you because listen God is our everything and he is more than enough but I don't care how spiritual or deep we try to be there's nothing like that love and support in the natural. There's nothing like a man putting his arms around you. A man saying, I got this. A man rubbing your feet. A man bringing you your favorite latte. Praying for you. Covering you. All that good stuff. And let's not even mention the forehead kisses. We're not going to do that. Mm -mm. And God understands. Because while he can satisfy us as no one can. While he can truly fulfill us. He wired us to desire that in a human being. In our man. 
And as God began to reveal these things to my spirit, I caught a vision of the old school whales. You know, with the little wooden bucket. I saw it going down into the well and being drawn back up full of water. That truly blessed me. The husband God ascended into your life has a well full of resources for you. He has a well full of all that God has caused him to be, all that God has revealed within him that is tailor made for you. And he's coming with a bucket full of what you need, refreshing, crisp, cool water. And after God broke down how he was going to be a well of refreshing, replenishing water to you and to your life, he also dropped in the word reservoir. He will be like a reservoir of goodness. Let me repeat that. He said your spouse is going to be a reservoir of goodness. And you know, I had to go look up reservoir because when the Lord drops in words like that, I want to see the exact correct definition. Now, most know that a reservoir does pertain to water. It can pertain to water that is collected or stored for certain purposes. It can pertain to a river, a lake, what have you. But the definition that really stood out to me was the definition that said it is a large quantity of something that is used or collected. A large quantity of something that is stored or collected for use as needed. That's the one right there. This clearly shows that this individual, this spouse is going to have whatever is needed at any given time. It's not just about that one source of water. It's about what is it that is needed. Whatever is needed, listen, that reservoir, that man has it. Nikki, how do you know that? How do you know that? Because his relationship with the father is going to cause him to seek him in regards to how to replenish you. If this man is sitting at the feet of the father, the Lord is going to reveal to him what you need. That is just the kind of guy you serve. And that's the kind of relationship that God is wanting to bring into your life. When two individuals love God first, seek him first, serve him first, they can't help but to receive the instructions the father has regarding you. Boaz, without even knowing Ruth, had the components within him to nurture and cherish Ruth. And not only that, he had the financial resources to help Ruth, who at the time was in a very bad financial situation. Boaz came bearing gifts. He had the things that she was lacking, that she needed, and that she would receive after connecting with him. And why was this the case? Because God had already gone ahead. God had already written that story. God had already filled every need. He knew what Ruth needed. He knew what Boaz needed. And he made sure they each had what the other needed in the time of their meeting. I had no intentions of going to the Ruth and Boaz story. But since we're here, why not dig a little bit deeper? I'm not going to read the actual verses. I'm going to paraphrase the story and just basically give you a play by play of this beautiful story. The story of Ruth and Boaz is one of my all-time favorite love stories. It's such a beautiful representation of how God would cause the one of his choosing to look out for you. Listen, just as I said that these men are going to go to the father and ask about you, when Boaz first caught sight of Ruth, he caught sight of her working in the fields, harvesting. And then, not only did he take notice of her, but he began to make things easy for her. He allowed her to continue gleaning in his field. He protected her by instructing his workers to allow her to continue to glean in his field because he knew that if she was anywhere else, she would be harmed. He had his workers leave out extra for her to ensure she had more than enough. He invited her in to eat. Listen, Boaz was not playing around. He did all sorts of things to protect her, to make sure she had what she needed and she had more than enough. And then when she asked him, why are you doing these things? Why have I found favor in your sight? He said, because it has been told to me all that you have done. And may the Lord bless you. He saw the goodness in her. He saw her humility. He saw her diligence. Listen, God just dropped this in. Thank you, Lord. This is good right here. The Lord is saying, those of us who have been stripped of things, who have been through the process, who have had such a hard time in this past season, but yet you still let the light of God shine, yet you still determined to change your story, yet you still want to do good, to serve the Lord, to do what he called you to do, that makes you beautiful. 
God has made all things beautiful in his time. You shine in a different light, a more radiant light when you've been through the refining and yet you've come out even more beautiful. You've come out stronger. And I know that's what Boaz saw in Ruth. And that brother was watching. That brother was watching Miss Ruth. And he wanted to protect her. You know why? Because within Boaz was something in his spirit that had a knowing that she belonged to him. You cannot tell me that he did not realize that Ruth was his good thing. He may not have understood the connection right off, but something in his spirit caused him to take notice of her and to provide for her and to protect her before she even was his wife in the natural. She's your queen to be. A queen to be forever. A queen who will do whatever your highness desires. Okay. Y'all, I almost bust out laughing at myself on that one because those notes were not it. But that's how that guy was singing it. He was not, mm -mm, he wasn't rocking it. But that was from the movie Coming to America. For those who may not know, that was a song that was sung as the princess was being introduced to the prince. But you get the point. Something in Boaz had to know that Ruth was indeed his queen to be. What I find so beautiful is how God literally just connected the story of Ruth to how this message was birthed. Because like I said, I was not planning on talking about Ruth and Boaz. But now it makes perfect sense why God brought it up. In that moment when he dropped in the message about my husband being a place of refreshing, replenishing. I think about how... Ruth must have felt. Her and Naomi had to journey to this new place in hopes of rebuilding their lives. She was newly widowed. Financially, she was in a bad place. There were no men in the place where she was leaving. And she didn't know what was in store for her. Things were not favorable for her. But yet, she simply wanted to do the right thing. And that was to take care of Naomi and to not leave her, but to just follow her and just trust that all would be well. She put her own needs and desires aside to accompany Naomi. And Boaz saw that and desired to fill that need immediately. I can just imagine Boaz just, you know, stopping what he was doing throughout the day to watch Ruth. Filled with so much adoration, so much respect. And eventually so much love for this woman who he saw had so much strength and determination and perseverance. So much resilience. And I think about how God was stirring his spirit as he watched her. How God was indeed giving him hints and clues and probably confirming things. Isn't that beautiful, y'all? There had to be so many other women that could have caught Boaz's eye. Women of higher status, what have you. But Ruth... A widow, a woman who was not financially well off, a woman who just appeared one day gleaning in his field. She was the one that caught his eye. And you know why that is? Because she was the chosen one. She had within her exactly what Boaz needed in a wife. And guess what? Ruth recognized that he was indeed her replenishing place, her reservoir of everything that she needed. And Ruth was not messing around. She did not waste any time. She knew what she wanted. She was obedient and she was strategic with it. And I am so here for it. Okay, so I just saw two magnets. I saw two magnets and I'm hearing that the two of you, you and the one that God has chosen for you are like magnets. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what's going on. I don't care where they live. I don't care about none of that. You two are going to connect regardless. You two are going to be attracted to each other. You're going to be like drawn to each other and there's this force which is the holy spirit because it's god's choice and his divine union it's this force that's just drawing you two together and it's going to continue to do so until you to connect that is how i feel it was for ruth and boaz he was naturally or should i say spiritually drawn to who ruth was without even fully knowing her and this attraction, this spiritual connection in return caused Boaz to want to look out for Ruth. You know what God just dropped in? He said it was her change in location that started their love story. It launched their love story. Her change in location. Hear that in the spirit. Lord, and that can pertain to spiritual location or natural location. It can even pertain to mindsets, relationships that we were not supposed to be in, 
take it to the Lord and this is your word and he will reveal to you what it means. But listen, a lot of us have come out of what we call our wilderness season, our process or just another season in general. And as we have done so, God has began to confirm over and over again that this is indeed our time for marriage, our season, our hour. And things have began to pick up, speed up. And God is saying the blessing was in your transition. It was in your change of locations. And when Ruth got to her promised land where Boaz was waiting for her, Boaz wasted no time in crying about her and doing what he had to do to become her kinsman redeemer. God had it all set up and he was winking at them. He was like, I know something just as he has to warn for you, waiting for you. He is waiting for you. And if your paths haven't crossed yet, when they do, he is going to have a mandate from the Father. He's going to be unctioned by the Holy Spirit to take care of you, to protect you, to cover you, to provide for you. And it is because the Father has told him all about you. Y'all, I'm getting excited. And no, this is not about a man just coming in and just sweeping you off your feet and doing A, B, and C for you. That's not the message. I'm just trying to stress and relay the message God has put on my heart that the one he's sending to you has everything you need. They're going to meet you where you are. They're going to feel the voice, the lack, because God has told them about you. And for some, it may be financial. For others, it may be in other areas. It is fine tailored to your situation because just like that reservoir, it is a large supply, a quantity of whatever is needed. It is stored up for you. And that can be so many things across the board. You have caught the eye of your man, okay? You have caught the eye of the one God is sending your way. And the Lord has told him all about you. He has been all up in your business. And he is about to say, come glean in my field. Not only that, but come glean in my field and don't leave. Boaz says, stay put. He wants you to be close. He wants to keep you close to himself so he can provide care and nurture. Listen, some of you are gleaning in your future husband's field and you don't even know it. You are gleaning in his field, but you're about to know. God is very strategic in regards to where he places us. And a lot of times he places us in situations where we are right there in our spouse's field and we don't even know. That all goes back to that suddenly, that suddenly. And for some of us, you've been gleaning in this individual's field for I don't know how long. And you may even know that it is indeed the one God has chosen for you. And he's wanting you to know that he has indeed been watching you. And he has indeed been doing things for you. And he's about to go the extra mile, take that final step and ask you to be his boo, to be his wife. And this is because in his observation, in him watching you, he has identified his place. He has identified how he can add to you. And not only that, he's identified that you are indeed his favorite factor. There's something within him that causes him to be drawn to you. And it's gotten stronger as the Lord has begun to reveal more and more. And the father is saying he now knows his place in your life. And that is why it is now the appointed time. And I just really feel like the Lord's wanted me to speak specifically to a group of women who may find themselves in some tight financial situations. You may feel overwhelmed, overworked. You may be a single mother trying to make ends meet. Whatever your situation is, God is wanting you to know he is sending help. He is sending your reservoir, your well. And this man is going to understand the assignment. And he's going to come with an attitude of, how can I help you? How can I be there for you? Because he's simply following the orders of the Father. I can't stress that enough. I just keep feeling that in my spirit. That this man is going to be following the instructions of the Father. And it's going to be so strong on him. That you're going to feel like you're in a fairy tale. And all my life you all. I have been drawn to fairy tales since I was like a little girl. And I know they're not realistic. But you cannot tell me. God does not desire to send you a man. That makes you feel like a princess. Like a queen. That makes you feel loved. Protected. Taken care of. Covered. All that good stuff. The man God has for you. Will make you feel that way. And like I always say. It's not perfection. Not by far. But there's just something amazing. About a man who seeks God about you. Who seeks God on how to love you. And who God is sending with that fresh water. That deep down reservoir that is full 
of all that will add and enrich and refresh your life. It's going to bring restoration on all levels. That's powerful. I better catch that in the spirit. And the Lord is saying, stop thinking that the one of his choosing will not accept you because of your situation. You, you, you're a widow. You're a single mom. You're divorced. Whatever the case may be, stop letting that get in the way of what the father is doing. He is sending your Boaz, your kinsman redeemer, and he wants you just to accept it. Okay, y'all. I must try not to get too excited, but the way God just drops things in my spirit at the most perfect times, the way he ties things together in my life as I'm doing these messages, the way he brings things up that fit perfectly together, they simply amaze me. And I'm always in awe of, listen, he is such a good God. But anyway, I'm reminded of a time, maybe four months ago. I was at my sister's house. It was a time where I was just going through a lot. I had relocated. It was a lot of transition going on. I was just trying to figure out what next, Lord. It was just a lot, y'all, a lot. And I was in the yard at my sister's house, and we were conversing. And in that moment, a golden retriever comes running into the yard. Mind you, the golden retriever has significance. I will get back to that later. But it was a golden retriever. And as the dog dashed into the yard, the owner began to call out for this dog. And when I tell you all what this dog's name was, you're going to you're going to you're going to freak out. The dog's name was Boaz. <laughs> Boaz. My face when she started saying Boaz, Boaz, I looked at my sister and I just kind of chuckled and I knew in my heart in that moment in my heart and in my spirit that God was using this moment for something because not many months before that he began to reveal to me that he was sending my spouse. So immediately I thought, OK, God, I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing here. So as the owner of the dog makes her way into the yard, I tell her I really like your dog's name. And she just kind of chuckled and said, yes, my husband named him. It's Boaz. And now all we need is his roof. And so I just thought that was just so cute. But y'all, y'all, do you see how God just tied that in together? How he just brought that up as I'm talking about God sending this reservoir, this well of resources into our life. And how it's going to be like Boaz was with Ruth. And how this, y'all, let me gather myself. Let me gather myself. Y'all, the Holy Spirit surprises me with where he takes me in these messages. And I'm just so excited to know that God has brought this back to my memory. That was God confirming things he had said to me. And it was in a moment where I was just dealing with a lot. I was dealing with a lot of things. And God was just saying, listen, daughter, your Boaz is on the way. As if that was not enough. The Lord just kept bringing more and more confirmation. Literally weeks before that occurrence happened, I remember seeing another YouTuber post something about golden retrievers. And it caught my attention in that moment, but I did not watch it. So after this happened with the golden retriever with Boaz at my sister's house, God brought it back to my memory. And so I went back and I watched that video and I was blown away. This individual was saying how she had dreamed about golden retrievers and how the Lord had revealed to her that it was pertaining to kingdom spouses. And that was so because the characteristics of a golden retriever matched what God was bringing to us in a spouse. My mouth dropped, y'all. My mouth literally dropped. I was like, God, you are just so intentional you are so strategic and you make sure that your children get the memo that they get the confirmation that they need and i feel his presence even now as i'm speaking y'all because because it just it's just hitting me y'all all that god is showing us and doing to let us know listen i got you i got you and he's just wanting to encourage you and to let you know that if anything else look at what i've been showing you Stand firm on the confirmations I continue to give you. Stand firm on my love for you, y'all. Because God absolutely does not have to keep confirming these things to us. But because he loves us, because he wants us to draw strength from that, he continues to show us over and over again in so many different and unique ways that he's got us. 
that he's indeed fulfilling this promise and he's doing so to keep us encouraged. He is such a good, good father. Lord, I forgot to tell y'all about my golden retriever dream. That's one of the main parts. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember the sequence of things. First, I had the golden retriever dream. I had the dream first of the golden retriever. Then I had the occurrence in my sister's house when the golden retriever Boaz ran into the yard. And then I watched the video that just tied it all in together. So the dream was the first of all the golden retriever occurrences. And the dream was simply me playing with a golden retriever. I was just having a grand old time playing with this golden retriever. We were having fun. You know how you play with dogs. And as I proceeded to put the dog in the car, it turned into a whole man. A man, y'all. And I was like, what in the world? How did this go from a dog to a man? And, you know, I knew in my spirit that it wasn't one of those I ate something crazy dreams. I knew it was prophetic because of the way it just sat in my spirit. And you know how you have that unction in your spirit and you know to pay careful attention to it? That's how this was. So I just documented it and I didn't think anything else about it until later. And came the occurrence at my sister's house with the dog Boaz. That was the golden retriever. And then came the video. So you see what I'm saying? God is not giving you room to doubt him. These are things that, come on y'all, these are just not coincidences. These are things that are very strategic. So I say all this to encourage you to know that God has got you. That God is doing everything in his power to let you know that this thing is going down. And that there's no room for you to doubt him. And that he wants you to stay encouraged and expectant. Let's take it to the scripture so I can open up even more how God desires for this man, this spouse of his choosing to bring about a refreshing, to be a well that we can draw from. Ephesians 5, 25 through 29 sums this up beautifully. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. That she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves himself loves his wife. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Listen, it can't get any more plain than that. God uses the symbolism of him in loving the church often as it pertains to how husbands are to love their wives. God gave himself up for his church. That says a lot about how husbands are to treat their wives, how they are to honor their wives, and how they are to love their wives. They are called to be that reservoir, that well, that replenishing place because God has called them to be the head. And he has given them what they need to carry that role out in excellence. And they do so by sitting at the feet of the Father and allowing him to impart and do all that he needs to do within them. Listen. It's simple love when it's done the Father's way. It's simple love when it's done the Father's way. This message, I hope, calls you to see the importance of waiting for the one of God's choosing. It's just so much more beautiful when you're connected with the one of his choosing. Yes, you can have a decent marriage with someone else, an okay marriage, and even happy marriage. But why not have a divine marriage where you are truly fulfilled because you are with the one whom God saw you with, the one whom your soul your soul loves. God said he does not want his church to have blemishes, spots, or even wrinkles. So shall it be as it pertains to how this man is going to just make sure that you are all good. This man that God has sent into your life, this spouse, he's going to ensure that you are without wrinkle, without spots or blemishes. And he does so by simply allowing the Father to love you through him. To love you through him. I pray that the Lord met you where you were. I pray that those who this word was for, that it resonated, that you took a lot away from it, and that you would go to the Lord and allow him to expound on this even more. The Lord is always wanting to spend time with you and to be able to share and impart what he is desiring to say to you. Listen, I just pray that this uplifted you, that it encouraged you, and that it inspired you. May it cause you to seek out only the one that God has for you and to know that the one of God's choosing is going to come with resources. He is going to be a reservoir of goodness. 
I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for all your kind words, your comments, all the love. I am praying for you all. And so I surely hope you guys were able to understand me tonight. When the Holy Spirit gets to moving and I get excited, I talk super fast. So I pray you were able to get what you need to get and just know that I am working on it. Lord, I'm working on it. Please know that I love you guys so much. Thank you for the kind words, your comments, and all the love. I am so excited about what the Lord is doing in all of our lives. And until next time, stay blessed. Love y'all.